sometimes in the mornings you wake up and you're just like not awake enough to be bothered. And this mm -hmm. recipe is perfectly resilient to that. This recipe is a very unexpected way to top avocado toast. And we are going to talk about why it is so unexpected and why it is actually so delicious. I am so lucky to be joined today by Apollonia Poilan, who is here visiting from Paris and brought some of her family's sweet sourdough, legendary around the world, the sourdough. And I would love to hear a little bit more about just the history of your bakery. Thank you for welcoming me. This is my wheat sourdough bread. This is sourdough bread my grandfather started baking in 1932 in the heart of Paris on the left bank in the neighborhood of Saint-Germain-des-Prés, which was filled with artisan and craftsmen. My grandfather provided a bread that fed them, that would keep, and that's how the tradition started. Your father then took over at some point? Yeah. And he really structured the business and made sure to put things in place so that he could share his tradition with the neighborhood, with the Parisians developing a retailer's network, and beyond that shipping bread to America, to Asia, through delivery. And then how long have you been running the business? So I've been running the business since the fall of 2002. Mm -hmm. I took over the family business um, much sooner than planned. Mm -hmm. uh, I was taking a year off before I went to college. And unfortunately, my parents passed away in an accident. Mm -hmm. And whereas I had always said that I would take over the family business, I literally was working in the bakehouse. Mm -hmm. So from one day to the next, Instead of going down to the bakehouse and working with my master baker, I went up to my father's office. And with his team, with family friends, we were able to carry on the tradition. It's been 17 years and I love it. <laughs> the encounters, the links between bread and people make me appreciate my craft on a daily basis. I've visited your family's bakery before in Paris and it was a wonderful experience, but what has more recently been my experience is this cookbook, which is a way for people everywhere to experience your bread. I mean, the recipes for sourdough and all, all sorts of bread are in this book, but also new things to do with bread. With bread, exactly. Be because, it well, because it's an ingredient. Mm -hmm. People think of bread as your bread and butter, your morning toast, um, your little snack with, topped with a piece of chocolate, but there's more to the piece of bread mm -hmm. because people traditionally couldn't afford to waste a piece of um, bread and would have developed recipes on how to accommodate leftovers. What I call bread cooking is the idea or the outlook on bread as not only a food but also an ingredient. Here in the test kitchen at Food 52 we tried um, a whole lot of recipes from here because I just couldn't help myself because there were so many that sounded so intriguing. But this one was the one that when I tasted it, I just had to share it with everybody because it feels so unexpected. How do you like to do it? Because you said this is like your morning avocado toast, yeah. right? So what I would do is I cut the slice in two. And this is a classic Poilin family trick to have the perfect toast. Uh, toasting it on only on one side will keep it as it cools down nicer and not have that dry and cold crunchy toast. You'll have the crunch, but you'll have the smoothness of it as you bite into it. Put it in a toaster slot. Are you guys seeing this, by the way, that there are two pieces of bread going into one slot? I, and it works. It's so brilliant. And if, if, if your toaster is not uh, compliant, then just put it on the top and it will still toast it only on one side. So here is our perfect toast. Dark on one side and soft and steamy on the other. And do you like you like the crispy side up? Crispy side up. Taking the avocado and then putting it on. And what texture do you like for the avocado? Like kind of a coarse mash or? Yeah, just like just something that's going to hold it together because mm -hmm. you're going to be having having it using your hands and you don't want something where the pieces are going to fall off. Mm -hmm. And then you know for the bananas you can put them any way you want. I tend to like things when it's n there's not too much. Mm -hmm. When you're creating a tartine, the temptation is to create this beautiful volume. The problem is it's not practical to hold. Uh huh. So I would rather keep it on the lower side. It's not quite as fun when you have to um, eat it with a fork and knife, right? Exactly. <laughs> well, and the whole point is there you can eat it with your hands. Mm -hmm. So 
I'm going to put just a wee bit of the lime juice. And that's not so much for the avocado to help it hold up as much as to give it a, a flavor. And I, I love lime, so I am going to put a little extra lime on it. If you like chilies, like I do, um, you should put as many as you want. Banana first, actually. I, don't, I don't think it matters. In fact, you should do it with whichever way sort of comes first. Sometimes in the mornings you wake up and you're just like not awake enough to be bothered. And this mm -hmm. recipe is perfectly resilient to that. I'm gonna top it with honey. Um, and what I'd say for that is that you don't have to, but it just, it will help keep a little bit the bananas together. Mm. Um, and it is a sweet ad addition to it beyond the banana. I would love some honey. Yes, thank you. Alrighty. I love every single part of this. I wouldn't take away anything, personally. <laughs> and what's really interesting is you don't salt it. I don't salt it. Yeah. I like to season um, my foods, and there's such a world and wealth of spices out there. Why limit yourself to salt and pepper? Mm -hmm. So here you have the spice from the flakes and the specific taste of the lemon zests, and that's, that does that is my salt and pepper here. I assume um, that you have to start everything with salt, and, <laughs> but I held back when I first tasted this and I did not miss it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so thank, thank um, you for teaching me that. This combination of flavors was inspired by Pierre Hermé, who taught this macaron class many, many moons ago in Paris. I knew avocado and banana worked well together, thanks to him. Uh, but then there's also all of the other flavors and food encounters I've done since, and that eventually led to this. It's a little bit like a deconstructed smoothie on toast. Like all yep. of these things would make sense in a smoothie. Absolutely. But I actually like this better because you get to experience all the different ingredients separately too. You do. Should we go for it? We should go for it. Yes, I'm gonna take the big one. I'm gonna take a small one just to start. Mm. I love it. For more genius recipes like this, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel and pick up a copy of Apollonia's book, Fallen, and follow her on Instagram. On my Instagram, you'll find a lot of my continuing explorations from grain to bread, from crust to crumb. Thank you so much. You're welcome.